Hi again and welcome to this tutorial. I am Elena, I am a Media Studies Scholar at the University of Siegen and this is one of the tutorials made for the introduction to digital methods. Today we will learn how to use Zeisheimer, which is an open access research software for data collection designed by Stein Peters and colleagues in the context of Digital Methods Initiative at the University of Amsterdam. Um, basically, it's a very user-friendly uh, browser extension designed as a companion uh, to Firefox. Uh, uh, the tool can be simply pinned uh, to your browser uh, toolbar and activate it as you uh, navigate a platform um, of your choice. Uh, the posts uh, that then uh, will appear, uh, for example, when you are uh, searching for a specific hashtag um, or on TikTok, maybe for a specific sound, these posts uh, will be then collected by Zeisheimer along with the associated metadata. So before we proceed uh, with the installation, I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, how platforms actually make content searchable and accessible. Our focus today will be uh, indeed on uh, TikTok, uh, which is a platform known uh, for its sound memes. Uh, what you see here is a hashtag page board in the house uh, that assembles uh, somewhat over 2 million posts. At the same time, it's also a hashtag challenge originating uh, with board in the house the sound meme um, a viral hip-hop song uh, by curtis roach uh, this guy uh, here who is a songwriter and uh, a tiktok creator who went viral with a board in the house during the first months uh, of the first pandemic lockdown and as you can see this trend uh, has produced multiple adaptations all these uh, memes uh, that we can access uh, using uh, the hashtag or using the sound, uh, right? So this is a sound page. Um, obviously, the arrangement of videos here is slightly different. If you are uh, interested in studying uh, imitation publics uh, that are sound based, um, obviously, this page uh, can be used as an entry point for data collection. If you are more interested in the algorithmic logics of recommendation, the For You page on TikTok is the right place to go, especially when it comes to questions of visibility and invisibility of uh, recommended uh, content. Um, videos uh, that are suggested on the For You page uh, can be, well, interesting in terms of further exploration. But for our purposes today, I will simply use uh, board in the house, uh, the hashtag to collect post metadata. And to do so, uh, obviously, I will have to install and activate uh, Zeisheimer. And uh, well, uh, here I simply scroll down this page, follow the link to the releases and follow the updated uh, link uh, to the current version of uh, Zeisheimer, continue to installation and add the tool to my browser. Um, this button then appears, which allows you to access the tool's interface. If you do not see this tool, please just double check whether it is pinned to your toolbar. So you can opt uh, in and out here, which makes this button visible and invisible. But all right. So as you can see, Zeisheimer can be can be used uh, for collecting data on different platforms. Obviously, we will focus on TikTok posts, and I will simply activate the tool. But one important in between step to actually properly activate Zeisheimer is to return to the hashtag page and simply reload it, uh, update it which will 
uh, well initiates the process of data collection uh, and as you can see metadata for 30 items or for 30 videos available here in the or visible here in in this preview have been already collected now uh, i can proceed by for example simply manually right scrolling scrolling down this page but um, well, for some research projects, you might be interested in collecting larger data sets and at some point, some kind of automation will have to be involved. Uh, for this, there is another nice uh, Firefox add-on called Fox Scroller. You can uh, also simply add it to your Firefox browser. If you want, you can allow it to run in private windows. Um, as soon as you have installed it, another button will appear, which you can then activate uh, by returning to your hashtag page um, uh, by clicking on the button. And then, well, right now we can see it's a little bit too slow, right? So we might want to set the speed. If you double click on this button uh, and select set speed, you can change this default value of 30, for example, to, uh, well, usually I use uh, 500, but you can, uh, you can uh, speed it up uh, if you want. So now with the speed, uh, scaled up, we can see that the tool scrolls uh, down this page a little bit faster. And well, uh, I can see that right now, perhaps uh, my internet connection is too slow, but it does not matter because we have already collected somewhat over 250 items and metadata uh, using this tool. And well, right now we have several options here. If we are not quite satisfied uh, with the data we collected, we can delete the items and recollect. We can also import this data set to Forecat, which is a larger uh, environment uh, combining different options for data visualization and analysis. It requires uh, an installation on a server. But for our purposes today, we will simply learn how to work with this anti-JSON file, um, which is a file format most commonly used in the programming context. Um, what we are actually going to do is to reformat or convert this file to a spreadsheet file by simply downloading it to, uh, uh, to our download folder, well, simply by clicking on this button, the uh, and the JSON file uh, should be downloaded, uh, as you can see here. And to convert this file to a spreadsheet file, we will use Zehaven, another very small tool, the, the only purpose of which is to, as you can see, to convert Zehaven and the JSON uh, files to CSV files. So. To use this tool, we simply drag and drop the anti-JSON file in this uh, field and uh, automatically we receive an output of a CSV file, which we can then open with any spreadsheet editor. I am going to use Google Spreadsheets and I'm simply going to again drag and drop this file in uh, in a Google Drive folder from where I can open this file using double click open with and uh, by selecting Google Sheets I can then access the spreadsheet containing um, all these different data points uh, right all these data associated with TikTok videos that we have 
uh, that we have accessed using the hashtag board in uh, the house. And uh, since it's a semi-public tutorial, I have glitched uh, the author names, uh, well, for ethical uh, reasons, uh, the only account name that is not anonymized is that of Curtis Roach, uh, since Curtis is uh, the original uh, creator um, of um, the hashtag challenge and uh, of the associated sound memes. So now you're probably wondering uh, what can we do with uh, all of this information. That's why in the second part of the tutorial, I'm simply going to walk you through this spreadsheet column by column, starting with um, numeric IDs or unique identifiers that can be used to identify repetitions in your dataset, especially when we are working with larger datasets compiled using multiple search queries. Uh, this is the column that then can be used to filter out the repetitions. Uh, then we have author metadata along with author metrics, something to consider exploring in the context of creator studies. But as always, please do be mindful of the ethical decisions that ideally uh, should always be attuned to your research questions and contexts. Uh, the next column is the body of the post uh, or video captions. This uh, column contains uh, strings of co-hashtags associated in our case with board in the house, along with plain text that quite often is also emojified, uh, as you can see, and emojis uh, can be used uh, as filters uh, for further contextual, potentially even kind of sentiment uh, analysis. And I'm just going to briefly demonstrate how to apply a very simple uh, filter to this column using the flame emoji. Select the column, click on the filter button and opt in for conditional filtering, text contains, paste the emoji and by confirming you will arrive at a smaller collection of posts that all use the same emoji and uh, obviously this is an entry point for further qualitative analysis. Great, timestamps. Uh, time is important for many reasons, but in this case it can help with creating timelines of engagement. We can, for example, sort uh, this uh, sheet uh, from Z to A to make the most recent posts uh, appear on the top when studying the evolvement uh, of mimetic communities over time. Timestamps, uh, therefore, are a very valuable uh, right, data point that can be also combined with many uh, other contextual descriptions. Great. Uh, What's next? Two very binary columns because they simply contain yes or no entries indicating whether or not a given post is a duet or an ad. Uh, again, in the context of creator studies, these data points provide an overview um, of the emergent formations around influencer cultures. Okay, hashtags here separated by commas, something uh, we can use for co-hashtag analysis, analysis of hashtag publics uh, using, for example, Gephi. For this, there is another tutorial. Finally, music metadata or sound metadata very characteristic for TikTok and important for the analysis of sound memes and uh, speech templates. As you can see, some creators use Board in the House uh, by Curtis Roach, uh, which is not surprising considering the way in which we collected our data set. Um, but most uh, of the videos have been published with uh, the so-called original sound. Original sounds uh, can be any kind of sounds, uh, any kind of audio tracks. 
uploaded by TikTok creators. And these sounds can contain speech, uh, original music, ambient sounds, but they can also be simply recordings of previously uploaded uh, popular songs, which uh, then circulate uh, under the default original sound or renamed uh, sound title without any indication of the original source. So in our case, we can, for example, expect that some of these creators reuse board in the house and reshare the song under this default original uh, sound title, uh, which can be an interesting entry point in uh, the analysis of mimetic communities that kind of subvert, uh, right, that traceability of trends. So here we are potentially dealing with uh, disguised meme templates that then uh, can be identified by converting speech contained uh, within these original sounds, and this can also be like musical speech, to text. There is a separate uh, tutorial uh, explaining uh, how to do this uh, using artificial intelligence, uh, basically. All right, the next column or two columns that are important in the context of visual analysis are TikTok URLs and thumbnail uh, URLs. Uh, TikTok URLs literally redirect us uh, to the actual TikTok posts and this column can also be used for downloading the video files. Thumbnail URLs are the preview images or uh, these links redirect us to the preview images that appear when we browse through a TikTok page. And um, these video thumbnails can also be customized uh, by creators. So also um, a very helpful way of performing visual analysis on, on TikTok content along with actually studying the video files. Uh, post engagement uh, metrics we can use likes, comments, shares, or plays uh, to rearrange uh, our data set by popularity. Again, also a very straightforward way of kind of delineating uh, visible communities from those that received uh, less engagement. Uh, challenges are basically hashtags, uh, right? Then location depends on whether or not a content creator has opted in or out for being traced when using the, the TikTok app. Um, then stickers and effects. Stickers are emojified texts overlaid on top of the videos uh, that can also be used for contextual analysis and effects are video effects and just to provide a quick overview i'm going to filter out the blanks here to see which effects have been used in board in the house videos green screen uh, which is the most common video effect disco uh, all kinds of cutification uh, filters uh, yeah well bling bling uh, freeze frame um, and so on. So another entry point uh, for visual analysis, for the analysis of visual vernaculars. So to conclude, we, we can use all these data as a relational entry points uh, into our analysis to create an interesting subset of videos for further exploration. Uh, we could, for example, apply uh, different filters at, at the same time uh, using, for example, uh, the music name column to, uh, to filter out original sound videos and then in order to see which of these videos are networked uh, through which co-hashtags or which of these videos contain specific video effects, uh, we can then further uh, kind of apply other filters and in doing so create, uh, well, a smaller uh, collection of posts for 
for example, qualitative analysis. Or, of course, uh, we can also uh, simply use uh, the TikTok URL column uh, to download uh, the videos uh, and the downloaded files uh, then serve as a basis for the analysis of speech templates, for example.